Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena. In this week's video, I am gonna revert back to my carefree bachelor lifestyle because Ava is gonna fly to New York to work with her sister for the next month. But her timing is basically perfect because I desperately need to get started studying for my ABYC certification. I plan on hanging out here in the BVI's until Ava returns and that should mean plenty of time to study and also plenty of time for some fun DIY projects. If you're new here, we're Ava and Mess. I spent seven years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Trident Warrior sailboat named Athena. It was an oh glorious sanding extravaganza. We left Denmark and started cruising full time, sailing down Europe's west coast. And then we had our biggest adventure yet, crossing the Atlantic. Now we're sanding and sailing our way around the world. Unfortunately, last week I hurt my foot, so I'm a little limited in water activities and how much I'm gonna be jumping around for the next couple of weeks. But I do have some fun things lined up. For this week, for instance, I here in my splicing bag have everything I need to make a pendant snubber. In last week's video, I made an alternative to our heavy duty anchor snubber here. That guy is up on the chain right now, but I think if I can make the pendant snubber this week, then we can kind of complete our snubber collection. The goal for today is to sail from Virgin Gorda up here in Gorda Sound, where we're anchored right now, and then about 10 nautical miles down here to Totola where the airport is right here and supposedly we can either grab a mooring ball or anchor right here. From what we've read, that's only about a two minute walk from the airport terminal. So this could very well be the world's best uh, sailboat parking near an airport. We are just about to get underway and I don't know why, but for some reason Ava decided that now would be the perfect time to do a bit of crafting stuff. My time is limited, I gotta get it done. With Ava's last minute crafting spree out of the way, uh, let's see how easy it is to get that light weather snubber off of the chain. And yoink, that was easy. Yep, we're off. Sometimes leaving an anchorage feels a bit like Groundhog Day because yet again, Batteries are low and we need water. We only have a 200 liter water tank, so I have no idea what we would do without the trusty Rainman water maker. And because we're gonna be motoring for a while, we might as well also turn on the water heater. Now that we're well underway, why don't you, Ava, tell us why you're abandoning your poor husband? Ah, uh, well, I am going to New York to watch my niece. My sister's gonna be working there for the next month and a half, so I get to spend some niece some time. Time with the favorite niece. Yep, exactly. Um, but it's a paid gig. It's a pretty sweet gig <laughs> because I get to spend some time with my niece, influence her mind. Well, actually, my background is in early childhood development. I have a master's degree in early child development. I was a preschool teacher for many years. I was a nanny for over 10 years professionally because unfortunately in the US, being a nanny pays way better than being a preschool teacher. But anyways, I don't want to get into that in the US education system. But yeah, I'm going to New York to spend some time with my niece and yeah, and my sister. So it's going to be awesome. Now for the next question for the betrayer. How guilty on a scale from one to 10 do you feel about leaving your poor husband <gasps> here in the BBIs to fend for himself? Oh, well, I do feel bad. No. I do, yes I do. I'm it's... gonna be <laughs> It's only a month. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't be able to live without me, right? True, 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 true. true. <laughs> now to give Ava some peace of mind, what, uh, what are you doing? Are you studying already? I solemnly swear to not turn the boat into a giant dusty mess while you're gone. <gasps> wow, on the ABYC standards? Yeah. Uh, you better yeah. uphold that, I yeah. swear. <laughs> and also, can you please promise to eat some vegetables while I'm gone? Eat some vegetables? At least, like, oh, once a week, please. Okay, sure. Promise to eat. Okay, no, a, once a day. A once. ton of vegetables. <gasps> once a day. Yeah. Okay, once once a day. Sure. Oh. Sure. 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 Vegetables once a day. And potatoes sure. don't count. <laughs> no potatoes. Sure. Vegetables. Yeah. Shh. 
little known fact. Before I studied uh, computer science, I studied biology. And in terms of botany, there's no such classification as a vegetable. So yeah, vegetable is nothing. There's no such thing as a vegetable. That's got to be the nerdiest thing you've ever said. <laughs> On a more serious note, we did get the email from the customs or the bureaucracy people <laughs> saying that the paperwork is ready for the temporary import of Athena. So we are going to head over there today and get that. The whole temporary import is a little bit weird, but we need to temporarily import Athena into the BVIs because she's going to be here for more than a month. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird system, but it's fairly easy to do. It turned out there were plenty of free mooring balls, maybe because they're 40 US dollars per night. And like I mentioned, they are right next to the airport. Dressed in our Sunday best to hopefully incur goodwill from the bureaucracy, we headed toward shore. It's a short two minute dinghy ride to the little dinghy dock, but pro tip here, make sure you eat at the restaurant, otherwise you're charged $15 to use the dinghy dock. It took all of three minutes to walk from the dinghy dock to the airport with the rather appealing name of Beef Island Airport. It took longer to get a taxi than the dinghy ride and the walk, but eventually we got one and headed towards customs headquarters in Road Town. The seven mile taxi ride offered some great views, but at $30, it's starting to seem like nothing is affordable here. The customs building looks exactly like what it is. The silver lining is they have amazing air conditioning. It costs $200 per year to do a temporary import into the BVIs, but for those $200, you also get a really nice piece of dead tree. We celebrated our success with fried chicken burgers that were actually really good. Although seeing this little guy eyeball his fried distant cousin had a slight flight 571 feel to it. Good morning, guys. I uh, dropped Ava off at the airport this morning, and uh, now I'm all alone here on the boat. I think I'm gonna head back up to Gorda Sound. It was nice up there, it wasn't too crowded, and also the holding was really good. Fortunately, there is absolutely zero wind right now, so it should be easy to get off the mooring ball. Easy peasy, no drama. Thank God for Mr. Autopilot. This uh, brings back fond memories of sailing Oblix around Denmark all by myself. Engine is off, sails are up, and uh, there's not a lot of wind, so we're coasting along at about four knots. But I'm in no hurry, there's only 10 miles up to Gorda Sound, and I don't think it's good if I show up too early because then people haven't had a chance to leave yet. As you can see right now, we have an ETA of around 10 o'clock, which I think that's absolutely perfect, but I also think the wind is probably gonna drop when we get up to this part up here. I pulled into a Gorda Sound around 10 o'clock and found a nice sandy patch to drop the hook. Even though I only motored a tiny bit today, it still gave our batteries a nice boost and already around 1 o'clock we reached 100% state of charge. To not waste the excess free energy from the sun, I decided to do laundry. Not very bachelor lifestyle-like, but Ava has only been gone for a few hours. My goal for the next month is to study and hopefully get my ABYC electrical certification. I also would like to improve my CAD skills and also I would like to experiment with making carbon forged parts. These are all skills I think will come in useful this summer when I want to build our new dinghy and also in case we find a new project boat. Now I already started making the first mold here in Fusion 360 
but uh, Fusion 360 is not really behaving the way I feel like it should. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to brush up on this and get better. So we'll get back to the uh, 3D printed moles in the next couple of weeks. As far as the studying, well, I don't know how interesting it's gonna be to see me read for hours on end. So I might do most of that off camera, but good news, I have managed to find our hammock, which I think is gonna be absolutely essential for my studying efforts. Before I put up the hammock and start studying, I wanna make a snubber pendant. I first came across this one from Mantis a while back and I was instantly intrigued by it. And I actually found that exact one in St. Martin, but it, no doubt thanks to the inflated prices here in the Caribbean, the thing was like 140 US dollars, I think. So yeah, that's pretty pricey. Looking at the prices in the US, the exact same one here is listed for $67. What do we do when we want to be fancy, but we can't afford being fancy? Well, we DIY. I've scrounged together the materials I need, and to build one of those, I think it's about 10 US dollars. The difference between my DIY version and the Mantis version is the fact that their cover here is a lot nicer than the stuff I could find. So theirs is definitely better, but I think mine will do okay. It's only about a 15 minute project and uh, should only cost about 10 bucks. So if it goes horribly sideways, it's not the end of the world. The length of the pendant needs to be long enough to bury the ends as you'll see towards the end of this process. The one I'm making here is around 180 centimeters long. Whenever I need to cut rope that likes to fray, I add a quick wrap of tape to keep the ends nice and tidy. Especially for cutting Dyneema, a pair of purpose-designed scissors is a huge help. The ones I have here are from D-Splice, but I'm sure there's other brands out there. The only other tool we need for this project is a set of fids. On a side note, if you're going to be splicing annoyingly tight double braid, I recommend you pick up a set of these soft fids. They make getting started a lot easier. I milk the cover over the Dyneema using one of the fids. With the cover placed right in the middle, I whipped the cover and covered the whipping with a bit of heat shrink. With the cover in place, the next step is to add two eyes, one at each end. I multiplied the diameter of the Dyneema by 50 and used that as the length till the start of my eye. I also added a second mark indicating the end of my eye. The eyes are made with a Brummel locking splice. You run the working end through the second mark and the other end through the first mark. And that's it, you have a super strong eye. The last step is to bury the working end and taper the end for a nice result and that's it. The second eye is just a matter of repeating the process for the first eye, quick and easy. In a matter of 10-15 minutes, I have my very own DIY snubber pendant. Ta-da! One relatively spiffy DIY pendant. I got intrigued by the pendant when I saw it on Mantis's website because you can use it for multiple things. You can use it as an anchor snubber, but you can also use it to take the load off of a line in case you need to. As an example, let's say this is your sheet. It's under load from the sail, but somebody has made a mistake. So now there's a big tangled mess on your winch that you can't undo because it's under load from the sail. Then you can put the pendant on here, use a different line to a different winch, take the load from the sail onto the pendant so that the sheet is no longer loaded. Or I should say the part of the sheet that's attached to the winch is no longer loaded. But uh, yeah, my primary interest in the pendant here was because I saw it could be used as an anchor snubber also. To make that a super spiffy solution, you could add something like one of these mooring snap shackles here from Mantis because yeah, these are just eyes. So yeah, this could either be a shackle or one of these guys. I don't know if I would trust a soft shackle for this. The big upside to something like the mooring snap shackle there, of course, being with a regular shackle way, you might have to bust out tools and uh, yeah, that, that makes the whole operation a little bit more annoying, but for testing purposes, I think this will be fine. For anybody keeping score, we're now up to four separate ways of attaching your chain to your snubber. We have this line representing a rolling hitch, my least favorite option. Then we have this guy, the heavy duty claw from Mantis. Then we have last week's edition of the light weather bridle here with this guy from Wichard. And now this week's edition, with the pendant. The reason I don't like the rolling hitch is because once that's been loaded, it can be annoying to remove. The same shouldn't be true for the pendant, but uh, 
we'll see. The pendant is on there, but with the current bridle, it's getting dunked in the water, which I don't really like. I don't like that because when it gets dunked in and out of the water like that, it gets a bunch of growth on it and gets super yucky really quick. But uh, yeah, for testing, this is fine. I'll use the uh, pendant and the uh, light weather doohickey from Witchert for a few weeks and then I'll share my findings. But just keep in mind that the pendant is my homemade cobbled together one and not the spiffy one from Mantis. Maybe you have a different exotic way of attaching your snubber to the chain. If you do, I would love to hear about it. Maybe I could add that to our collection and then maybe I could do a big snubber video at some point. So yeah, go ahead and leave a comment down below. It's getting late in the day and I think the early evenings are going to be prime studying time because it finally starts to cool down a little bit. So uh, I better assume the position. This will be our first time ever using our hammock in anchor, sort to say. I did a quick test fit back in Europe to see that everything fit, but since then we haven't had time to put it up. Back then I figured out that our best option aboard Athena is to use our spinnaker pole as the stay sail gets in the way of using our head stay. I might have to do a few tweaks to the studying HQ setup here, but uh, this is definitely not horrible. I've signed up for the online course, which is also why I have this super fancy study guide. From just flipping through this thing, it seems like this book is going to be a giant help. Once the uh, online course starts, then uh, I'll fill you guys in and give you a little glimpse into what it's like studying for one of these uh, certifications. The one I'm going for first here is the uh, electrical one, but uh, I'm also very interested in the corrosion one, but uh, let's start with the electrical one. I better get busy tearing into this guy, so that is going to be the end of this week's video. In terms of next week, I don't really know what I'll be doing because I doubt I'll get those uh, Fusion 360 issues solved by next week, but uh, I'll figure something out. And on that bit of uplifting positivity, I'm going to end this week's video here. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you!